Hello and a nice and warm welcome to the outside world, outside of the Digi Network, outside of Siemens. And I'm happy to have you here as my guests uh, on the screens. But I have also two guests here in our, on our virtual Digi sofa. On my left hand side, it's Robert Neuhauser. Uh, he is um, in charge for excellence regarding people and leadership. Welcome, Robert. And on my Hi. right hand side, it's Klaus Staubitzer, the CPO of Siemens AG. Uh, and my name is Thomas Olsner. Before I go into details, some words about Robert and about Klaus, because as you see, we want to talk about new normal supply chain. Uh, Robert is not a typical HR guy. I had the pleasure, I think, some <laughs> 10 years ago or even, even later. <laughs> Um, to work with him together when he made some works about global sourcing in the SCM environment. And then uh, for me, what was extremely impressive and I think brave from Siemens, he was the CEO from my point of view, some will now argue one of the most or the most relevant business unit as a CEO. And during the running operations, he changed from the typical waterfall because it's about software to an agile unit. And this worked brilliantly. So I think, Robert, correct me later, from four to five years for new software, you managed to do it down to 18 months. And I think that's a guy who walks the talk and now he's taking care about um, the new normal. And he will tell more about this later. And on my right hand side, Klaus. Klaus has an interesting history because he he did a PhD about logistics, so he is also not new to the business. Uh, and uh, then he was in a special team for special tasks. And I think he, he is bulletproof now because he was a CEO and a CFO of various business units. And since uh, quite a long time, he is the CPO of Siemens. And during this time, we went away from cost cutting to he calls it the value orchestrator. And I think he will elaborate a little bit about this later. And so we have two guys who can definitely answer all the outside questions. Now, why are we sitting here together? We are sitting here Try together to answer, because... Thomas. Try to answer. Why are we sitting here together? Because um, these two guys are heavily involved in the impact of the new normal and COVID-19 um, and in 2017 or late 2016, Klaus asked me and say, you have uh, always not typical Siemens ideas. Uh, why don't we try something new, a bottom-up approach? And this means since 2016, the growth mindset uh, roots are established within SCM. And within SCM, we found it or there grew a bottom-up network called the Digi Network. Yesterday in the afternoon when we had a meeting, a monthly meeting, I learned we are ecosystem. Maybe you can hear about this in two or four months uh, a little bit more. So today's topic is how are we dealing on the one side with a new normal, where Siemens is from my point of view a benchmark with remote from office working. And on the other hand side, COVID-19 challenges and yeah. So Klaus, my, my first question to you in person is, um, what can you tell me or us about masks? <laughs> masks. First of all, I have to say hello to everybody out there and um, a very warm welcome from my side. And well, Thomas, you mentioned the mask, um, quite honest, last year, uh, it was pretty much at the same time it was in March. I had no clue what's a FFP2 or what's an MSN mask. I had absolutely no clue, but all of a sudden we, we had this challenge to master the, the, the huge uh, demand of our company to get the masks uh, ready for the organization to um, fulfill all these demands and also make sure that we can manage the business continuity. And um, quite honest, um, Many people ask me in the last few weeks, what is our secret of success that we were able not only manage the mask demand, but also manage the full supply 
um, of the other materials for our manufacturing sites that we were able to um, to manage the business continuity. And it's pretty simple. There are three things which I believe are very relevant. First, we have this global presence. That means we have people all over the globe who have really an extreme good expertise. Second, we were able to find immediately is the transparency, what is really needed and where is it needed? So transparency was also a very relevant part. And the third thing, and I believe that's the most important thing, it's the people, it's the expertise, it's the trust of collaboration within our people, within our teams, and not only within supply chain, also with our cross-functional partners. These three things, you can also name it trust, transparency, and the right team, made the difference and put us into the position to really manage this crisis, not only for the mask, but also for the mask and the other material parts. I think this that answers that your question. Three, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> three yeah, things. My point yeah. of view, yes, my point of view, I think you're a, a very say stringent person. I think most of your say uh, messages are three or four bullet points. So. <laughs> The you know why? You know why? It's, it's easy for me to remember and hopefully also for the other folks. <laughs> yes, I, I think so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, coming from the three, three, three topics that you have, um, I think to, to, to Robert, um, think about two things, the emotional, non-emotional side. And so what? Wh why are we doing this whole mindset and growth mindset exercise? And what's your say? Uh, what, what was your um, say impression in, in March 2020? Um, honestly, as, as Klaus and most of us, uh, no one no one had a clue what was coming. Um, but but honestly, this is something that that we start to get used to. Uh, not not in terms of pandemics, but but in terms of uh, actually not not being able to predict the future very accurately, and and if you if you look for example at Siemens, but also also uh, the world around us, there the probably one of the biggest changes we see now for a couple of years in in B two B business in B two C business is that the business gets far less predictable than it was, and and this is a fundamental trend, and. It requires us to rethink a couple of things. How how do we deal with uncertainty in complex environments? And this is this is a fun fun thing, first of all, to observe, but also to think about what what needs to be changed if this happens. So how do companies need to evolve? And this is something where, where Siemens, I I think, made, made an amazing journey already, in terms of from from a company that was proud of building basically the perfect system and being the perfect system for a predictable world into really rapidly adapting organization. Are, are we where we want to be? For sure not, because you always can become more, more adaptive, but, but the overall trend making, making us as Siemens far more adaptive than we were in the past is a, is a long going trend. And what, what Klaus mentioned was, now, kind of a nice proof on on where we are on this journey, when when we got hit by this pandemic, and basically nearly from from one day to the other, we're we're able to switch in a mode where, where the whole company had no clue where this was going to happen, but people understood um, and and had the opportunity to basically think and decide by themselves, contributing decentrally. Um, and and also experimenting, which is the only way to to go forward in such an environment. And so this is, in a, in a sense, what we experience now with the pandemic is just just the version of of a big trend that that we see at Siemens overall, and where we put massive efforts into into helping our organization to become from an outstanding, good, perfect machine into a very adaptive organization. But uh, but always, uh, still way to go.
but pretty impressive in the meantime, I guess. Absolutely. And, and Robert, to build on what you said, I also experienced that in, in supply chain, we have that situation and we had that many times that we are jumping into these, we call it these crisis mode. And we had this a couple of years ago. Yeah, we, we are used to manage crisis. Okay. So now is the point after this long period of time to come out of this crisis mode and, and jump into this reinvention mode. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's the, the crucial thing at the moment. How can we transform the organization from this crisis mode into the reinvention mode? And, and I think that's the crucial part to make our organization, I would say, fit or capable enough to manage all the other upcoming challenges, which will come, which will come. Yeah. I have to, to interrupt your reinvention mode because I think for most of the people it will be very interesting. But now we're coming a little bit to the why and the what and the how of this DigiSofa. DigiSofa is a product of this Digi network. I will elaborate if you have time at the end. But the most important topic is when we created this format in 2017, it's a channel that everybody within the SCM community and also cross functions has the possibility to directly talk to top management. So Klaus and Robert have been already guests on our internal DigiSofa. And what are we doing? We're using Yammer or a chat function during our DigiSofa that every person worldwide can directly ask a question to Klaus and to Robert. And the community did, and Klaus and Robert also were brave to, to take this challenge. And in the meantime, we have now three questions from the outside world. Uh, thanks a lot. And the first question is from Svenja. And I please make it short because we got now another four questions. <laughs> Svenja has a, a quite simple question. It goes a little bit into reinvention everything. How was working from home been for you? I start with Robert as a guest. Um, so, so first message is I like it. I, I absolutely like it um, uh, because it uh, it helped me to communicate much easier with many people around the globe. So basically, the the world becomes smaller by this because everyone was used to just do this. So in my case, it speeded up and and intensified communication. However, you also see that that people react very differently. So you have to have your ears wide open and eyes wide open. Who really has has more difficult to adopt to this style and who has less? Um, uh, so that was also something where, where I needed to put a lot active attention to. That's from my side. Klaus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Klaus, I, I, think I have to say it's more strange with the home yeah, especially. I, I, I I quite honestly I have to say there is a kind of a mixed picture. Um, on one side, it's highly effective and efficient working from the home office because you can jump easily from one virtual meeting into the other virtual meeting. But at the same time, I realized that um, I have now moved to different places in, in our, we call it our um, family co-working space. That means you start maybe in the morning <laughs> <laughs> in 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 your uh, on your desk and then you go on to the, to the couch and and finally end um, in a kitchen i don't know and these are the things i i have to say it's a little bit challenging yeah this is one <laughs> side and maybe that's the business side and and the other thing is what i realized how can you find the right balance and how can you charge again or recharge your batteries. That means how, how can you find the right mix going out, have some kind of physical activities or something else which brings you to maybe to other thoughts. And, and this is something which we, have, which we have to manage. From the technical part, it's more or less, it's done. But from the interaction part, how do we interact with our people? How can we gain the trust? How can we manage our, uh, I call it the, the relation account. In the past, we put a lot of effort into our relationship management. Now we 
take from our relationship account each and every day we book something, we book, book something down. And now we got to find ideas. How can we pay something into our relationship account? And, and for that, I, I honestly, I have to say, I do not have the real, the real key for, for these kind of things. Thanks for the answers. Uh, the good information for you, the Digi Network is on uh, working on solutions for this to manage the relationship account. We have already some concrete ideas. The bad news for you, you have to be shorter, guys, because we have uh, 10 questions here in the batch uh, line. And uh, sorry, I have to, 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 to scroll a little bit. So from Barbara, what is your estimation of whether the current situation will have a, a real long impact on the way we work together in the future. I think I go now with Robert and please 30 seconds now. Ab absolutely. It, it will have massive implication on our future. And, and Siemens is one of the companies that was very early on out there. Then we expect that after the pandemic, um, our people on average will, will maximal stay two to three days in office and, and the rest be working mobile. Um, and a couple of other companies have, have followed on this and we will see this. Um, so definitely there will be significant changes and it's a big accelerator for, for this change. Thanks a lot. I think especially two to three days is uh, under heavy discussion outside Siemens. And I think that's brilliant. Yep. Then from Jonas, I will now, uh, uh, Robert, again, you. Which are the three most significant implications of a growth mindset on leadership? So three significant <laughs> implications of a growth mindset on leadership. Um, this is a, actually, this would require basically, why do we need growth mindset? What is growth mindset and what are the implications? Um, if I do a, a, a radical shortcut, um, in, in an unpredictable environment, um, obviously leaders are not able to predict the environment. So they can't plan. So that they need to move away from the idea of, or we all need to move away from the idea, the leader knows it all and goes, goes ahead to a, how can a leader enable the organization to find into the right direction and to find this way. And when, if you take this as a guiding principles, how do leaders help the organization to find a common direction and move into a direction? Um, you get probably most of the answers because this requires that they are able to trust their people. It is able, they need to be able to define spaces where they're safe to experiment. They need to define spaces where people can learn and grow. And they need to take a lot of care about the mental health of, of people in their organization because we know we only experiment and learn if you feel safe. So creating safe spaces is another one of those. So if you ask me for the three, it's kind of help your organization to find its way, not your way. Second, create spaces where people can experiment. And third, make sure that you put enough effort on the mental health stuff of it because it is a necessity to, to, for your people to, to get into this gross mindset environment. Is Robert, that thanks for the answer. Kind of very yeah. short because, version of it. Yeah. No, I, I think I, it's I, really I, great. I, I, would like to add, I, I would like to add one aspect. Uh, in addition to what you said, Robert, uh, I would like to add and also give people these famous purpose. Yeah. In, in which kind of direction we want to go. Yeah. And I think that is also very okay. relevant. I have a good solution for you both. Just join the Digi Network because that's exactly what we are doing there. Safe space, experiment and doing something new. Uh, Klaus, for you, I think you have to speed up, guys, because we have a hell of questions in the meantime. And uh, Shiva, um, she asked, and I will address it now to Klaus, what do you personally do to boost your personal mindset? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting it on okay. cloud. Yeah, I mean, that, that's very easy to answer. Uh, so what does it mean? I mean, 
doing things like we now doing today that means we are in this chat helps me to to get new ideas to get impressions um, from the outside and also from the inside uh, and also get in touch with the people from the dg mindset and over the or overall in the organization that helps me to to calibrate the ideas and to think about what could be the next level and uh, i have to say sometimes it's painfully hard to to ask yourself constantly what could be the next step and what can we try out because it's this permanent thing like how can we get better on the other side it's it's very interesting and it's it's very motivating because you have the feeling you create constantly new ideas and new things and and hopefully for for a great impact and for a great value for the business thanks I think uh, we get in the meantime about 15 open questions. Next one is to Robert, especially for Matthias. If we had internalized the growth talks in the best possible way in supply chain, which things would we see more or don't see any more in your wildest dreams? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is perhaps for people uh, uh, dialing in from the external world. Siemens had for years a very traditional performance management process where we put targets at the beginning of the year and then try to rate people at the end of the year how much they, they were able to live up to those targets. And obviously, as, as mentioned before, this whole process is useless in a world where the timescales are far below one, one year and it's hard to predict what exactly should be done at the end, until the end of the year. So we switched this completely and got rid basically, first of all, of the yearly, yearly planning cycle for individual performance. Second, we got rid of all ratings at the end of the year where we rate people in terms of you're a number one or number five performer this year. And, and instead focus quite, quite a bit on, on speeding up the discussion in the team about what are the things that, that we need to solve together as a team first. And secondly, driving much more the discussion. If this is the case, what would be the next thing you need to learn? rather than like in the past looking back at the end of the year say, how well did you perform in artificial terms so that's for the out uh, uh, people outside siemens the switch to growth talks is about permanent discussion of what to learn next to to adapt better and so if i would see the major difference forget about formal processes on performance management it's really in the core about the discussion between manager and employee and even between employee and manager what's the next thing you're gonna learn and this is what what i'd expect from the sm guys but all of our, our siemens organization absolutely true absolutely true i think we have to agree more 30 seconds uh, because Don't we have such complex time. questions yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think you as an experienced manager, you can also make it short. <laughs> and now, to, to You're be right fair, I, I, I follow, the, the, for, for the outside world, we follow just a sequence. Sometimes we can combine similar topics, but this time we follow the sequence and feel free also discuss and comment the questions. And it's now, um, thanks for, to Shiva, to the compliment. And now we are from Jeanette Sieberg. Sounds a little bit Nordic. Uh, it's for Klaus. <laughs> when transforming SCM, what approaches do you take to understand consumer, customer, vendor needs and em embed that in the DNA of your organization? Empathy for who you create value for? Yeah. So how do I we mean, embed the needs? I mean, the overall question is always for a supply chain organization. What, what is what is the right value and how can we, you create the value? So what we did couple of years ago, we asked our stakeholder, that means uh, our business unit CEOs, CFOs, we, we asked the outside market how they see the value of an, of an SCM organization or procurement organization. And it turned out uh, the value is not only focused on material productivity, it's also this famous balance between availability, quality, and also productivity, and in addition, also supply innovation. And based on that, we created a framework uh, to say, okay, we want to transform our organization into a full value at orchestrator. 
That means you have to describe the value. As I said, it's it's a mix. It's a it's a it's a balance between these four dimensions: availability, quality, productivity, and innovation. And also, we have to make sure uh, that we use specific levers to transform the organization in that regard. That means digitalization, for example, is the lever to, to shape, to transform the organization. And, and I truly believe uh, that's not only um, valid for consumer business, that's valid for each and every business. Okay, thanks, Klaus. Uh, you answered now also the question from Levit Sander, what are the most important tasks of a new supply chain value orchestration in the future, because that's nearly the same. Um, to give you another challenge, uh, but now for the outside world, I think there's one guy, uh, and I think that's the perfect net etiquette, uh, Uskur Atta, he's from Kercher, and I think he says his name and his company. So this means as we have a lot of questions, I try to jump to the guys who are taking the risk of giving their name and the question, and I will come back to you with the chocolate boxes uh, challenge later. That's a word. Now a short question for Robert um, from Aigul Salgasova. Do you have any tips how to exercise adaptability, adaptability, adapt, shit. Sorry. Um, do you have any tips how to exercise Anpassungsfähigkeit on a daily level? How to exercise? Um, I, I think. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, you, you could give many answers. Uh, if you just take one, practice curiosity. As, as soon as you're really curious about things, about people, you, you'll find the way into, into how you can adopt. Uh, there's much more to it, but if you just take this, practice curiosity, it might be a good thing. Thanks. Now from side to Kandura. Uh, I think I give it also to Robert. How will the office look like after uh, after COVID-19 crisis? Um, a very, very short answer. It will become much more like a co-working space where people get together to do this stuff where it's really absolutely necessary that they are together, exchange views, uh, pay into what Klaus said, into the relationship um, budget um, and, and co-create ideas. While, while we will see the traditional, I, I sit there and work on my topics kind of things move move out, out of the traditional office. That's kind of the overall theme with many, many facets, obviously, because this is very different from country to country and, and from, uh, from unit to unit. Okay, thanks. My answer would have been different, but it wouldn't help. So thanks for the <laughs> elaboration. It gives a direction uh, already. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> You know this. You know uh, this thing? Um, just a little comment. I heard recently um, this this comment from somebody. Um, do we live at work, or do we work at home? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think here I, I will cheat a little bit. I think for me, Klaus is one of the best practice leaders and one of the best leaders I ever met because since April. Every meeting he's joining, he switches his camera on. And the first question is, what's about your family business, your family continuity? Is everything good at home? And I think that's as leaders, we should always have at the first issue topic on our personal list. Now I go to Sönke and after that, I go to the guy from Kerka. Uh, Sönke, what I think that's for Robert now. What new skill did you learn during this difficult time? <laughs> um, new skill. Um, I, I I don't don't think it's a it's a completely new skill. It shifts shifts focus. It's really trying to take even more care about just what you mentioned about discussing non-business stuff um, to get a feeling for uh, for for the environment your your counterparts on the other side of the screens are this is something that that i do much more often 
and get obviously also more more used used to it. Um, that's probably the biggest difference I can think of at this very moment in time. Beyond all, okay. you learn to diff use different tools and blah, but this is kind of normal, yeah. Like Teams. But now, question to Klaus from Özgür Atta. Um, he is from Kercher and working in the supply chain management environment. Uh, what do you do to overcome difficulties with people, with suppliers, with systems, who which are not flexible enough for a growth environment? And I think we only take one, the suppliers maybe, or the people, please change. So what are we doing to overcome difficulties with people or suppliers, which are not flexible enough for a growth environment? This is, I have to say, that's a... <laughs> Real broad question. <laughs> short answer, Klaus. <laughs> short answer. <laughs> I know. I mean, the most the most important thing whenever you realize there's something going wrong, okay, the most important thing is get in touch with the people and have this kind of communication. What can we do together to to solve the issues, the difficulties, and the problems? I mean, that's the first two D always. Um, but what we also realize that if we use more and more this virtual environment. Yeah? That means we now are performing um, virtual supplier days or virtual negotiations, e-auctioning more than we ever did before. This requires a specific willingness and motivation um, on both sides. That means on, on our people's side and also on the other side, on, on the supplier side. So probably, in in future and that future means in in your few weeks or months we will have a natural select selection process of suppliers who are not able to participate in a virtual environment and those who are able to participate and and these are the things um which we have to take care of and these are the things we have to carefully manage um, but it is as it is. It, it will be the new reality going forward. And you can only manage the, that if you have openness and willingness to get in touch and talk to each other. One of the commas is just talk. And I think the other commas is just like I mentioned before, ad adaptability. I try exercise now a little bit in the meantime. Klaus, next question for you. Uh, so from Wagner Douglas, I don't know in detail. So would you say relationships between Western and Eastern companies have been strengthened through the vast increase of digitalization? I, I wouldn't go so far to differentiate between Eastern and Western um, part of the globe. Um, what I realized is um, to most of our suppliers, we have really a close relationship. And um, we also find ways to communicate with our suppliers. And this new virtual environment gives us the opportunity to even more communicate on this virtual base because we can cut out these travel times, for example. But as I said before, it requires a, a different structure of the communication. Yeah, you have to be better prepared upfront. Uh, you have to know exactly what you want to talk to each other. And there's one thing which we really have to take care of is this relationship issue. You cannot manage this emotional, this human relationship with all this technical environment as we did it before. And, and therefore, going forward, we got to find the right mix no matter if we have a supplier in, in the Western part or in the Eastern part or anywhere else on the globe, these are the things we have to manage. Find this balance between virtual contact relationship and physical relationship. Okay. I think I can especially under, uh, underline this topic with reduced travel um, times because we had this online workshops where a CEO from a, a bigger Chinese company joined our collaborative workshop in a 3D environment with based on a startup software. And he said, without digitalization, I would have never been able and willing to join a workshop. So thanks. 
I jump now a little bit to the back because there's a very nice question for Robert as the other questions are also directed to Klaus, to Robert. Um, a very interesting 30 seconds question. How is it working in HR after serving your time in hardcore business as CEO? Um, absolutely fascinating. Um, so, so many amazingly enthusiastic people driving things and an environment that is changing at least as fast as, uh, as business currently, because technology disrupts not, not only, uh, only traditional businesses, it also disrupts STM, it disrupts HR. So there's really lots of place for highly innovative people who really <laughs> live a gross mindset every day. So this is, I think, uh, the most spectacular part of it. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Then to Klaus, it seems it's a, a Siemens colleague. I don't know exactly. Number. My feeling is that Siemens so far navigated quite smoothly through supply chain challenges during the pandemic. How did we do that? So it's a colleague of us. Yeah, I mean, it comes back to what I said at, 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 the, at the early beginning, the, these three elements, this global presence, um, the transparency we gained really nearly overnight. So that means which kind of supplier is under pressure, which kind of material, which kind of items we have to manage. And, and the third thing, and, and, and I say it again and again and again, it's the expertise of the people, the attitude, the willingness of the people to work together, to make it happen. And we gave them the framework with our um, IT platforms, with our digital platforms, and that put puts us into the position to really manage that on a global base. It was amazing to see how all these different wheels are um, working together and all these transmission pel uh, belts are working like hell. And, and that's, that's, that's the secret. It's the attitude, it's the expertise of the people in combination with the digital framework we established, we implemented over the last years. So another way to say it was the perfect, it was the perfect, the crisis hit us at the moment where we were able to use our platform like hell. Thanks. <laughs> Next question from uh, Rolf Isch. And I will answer it because I think we have so many questions. A um, little bit of my own term, isn't it? So that the all online working mode harm cooperation with new partners, trust between different silos and functions, joint learning. How to overcome this? I think there's three simple answers. One, we have to change behavior and therefore we have this growth mindset issue. And I think that will help. Secondly, do simple things. Camera on, be honest. And don't mind if 10 children are playing in the background because we are working from at home and not everybody has the luxury of having own rooms for working. And the third topic is within the Digi network, we are working on different issues like 3D uh, rooms where we meet. Uh, we started one year ago already of a full link of concept board teams, Menti and so on. So there are ways to overcome. And the fourth is a surprise that we will release in the next few weeks. We are doing an experiment to, to pay into this relationship account that uh, Klaus mentioned. Then from Orwell, maybe a short question. And it's interesting, what are you doing uh, to answer the question both? From Orwell, how is the HR and the SCM are collaborating to make an impact. So HR, SCM collaborating to make an impact. Actually, that I, I think this, I, I would widen it, honestly, um, because it's not HR and SCM only. It is, is basically what, what we see at Siemens that, that this fundamental switch from how, how do we become more adapt, adaptable is something that does not does not end at, at HR borders or SCM borders or something else. Is really how how we push this whole idea. And so, if I look, for example, what what is run as as initiatives out of out of SCM, for example, the Digi uh, Digi Sofa. Traditionally, you would have said this is an HR topic to do. 
No, it's not enough. You can't outsource people topics to HR. You need to drive it out of your very specific environment. So, so basically the function at Siemens to a large extent start driving traditional HR stuff. While at the other hand, what HR does in many cases is not, not putting complex processes on businesses for HR stuff, but rather discuss how can we help you to enable your people to become more adaptable? So, so in, in that's really the, the borders between, between this starts to blur and, and Klaus and myself, I think in person are examples of this. We know each other's businesses very well and can think in the other shoes. And this helps quite a bit in many cases. It was a longer answer, but I think it, it really is important to understand it. Yeah, and, and to build on what you said, Robert, um, it is a little bit a mind shift we did over the time. Um, in the past, we always were waiting for these top down approaches yeah? that somebody from mm -hmm. HR uh, told us what to do or somebody from procurement said, you have to do this and that. Now we're starting more and more bottom up activities like the DG network, like the DG mindset workshops and the like, and many other things to enable the people in their area of responsibility to make a difference or to solve problems. And at a certain point in time, then we need the support of the different functions. And just to give you a concrete example, when we talked about how can we shift activities from our office environment into our home office environment, we thought, Hmm, is that the right approach to do all the things at home that, which we did before in the office? And I said, that's probably not the right approach. So we had a contact to our HR partner. Then we went out to Fraunhofer Institute, for example, to start a project to think about what is the new content in sense of SCM activities, which we do now from the home office and which we then do in our normal office. So I think this is a real um, good example how things are going together and um, support each other. Thanks for your 30 seconds challenges. Um, I'm emphasizing this because we have about 15 questions left, 20 minutes time. Maybe we do the two sentence answer in the future. Uh, with some exception, why I'm so urging on this, because I think Klaus and Robert, you're doing a great job. Uh, you have several questions in the backlog addressing things where I know it goes to the heart of Robert and goes to the heart of Klaus, where I think they are really interesting, but I don't want to, to, to skip it. But here from Tony Schreiner, there's a question, I think that you started already answering Klaus. Should we focus the support processes for our employees more on home office? I think the support process for people on home office um, needs a change. Your view or uh, Robert, both, as for me, that's very important. A, a very short answer. Yes, it, it needs a change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Then um, from Sufra, would like to know how to deal in a situation where your key decision maker has a fixed mindset and also what can we do to foster a growth mindset in our organization? So how are you dealing That's... with a key decision maker with a fixed mindset? So two, two, two things. First of all, as in any change process, think about why this is the case and what kind of bridges you are able to build. And this does not matter whether it's hierarchical someone uh, who is above you or or peer or whatsoever think in their shoes and try to understand why why what's hindering them number one number two if it's your boss and you see absolutely no opportunity to change the situation leave that boss there is no other simple way and this is by the way something that we encourage as hr instead of trying to make out of a bad leader, a good leader, which sometimes does not work. We tell the people, you're not slave of this person. Just leave, grow, find your own growth journey instead of complaining about being stuck on a fixed mindset leader. Yeah. Klaus, you want to add? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. 
<laughs> I mean, that's okay. That's everything is set. Yeah. That's the reason I'm with Klaus because I had to do this decision and I think it was the right decision that I changed. Um, oh. Patanka. It's for Klaus. What qualities will we as CM look for when we acquire new talents in future, keeping in the mind the post pandemic situation? So acquiring yeah. new talents in post pandemic situation. Yeah. It from my point of view, it doesn't has to do with, um, have to do with the post pandemic situation. It's, it's a simple question. Um, we hire for attitude and then we train for skills. So what we try to find, we try to find people who have these clear attitude to make the difference within supply chain and, and all the other things which might be necessary, um, could be trained, could be managed. And of course it helps if you have a, some kind of diversity, it doesn't mean gender. It means really a broad priority in the business experience, because we as SCM, we are maybe one of the most cross-functional, um, function in the business. And therefore we need a broad variety of expertise to manage, to manage these huge spend for the business. Can only agree. Then we have, sorry, uh, Klaus, you again, how do you empower your team to drive transformation and take matters into their own hand? Um, we said that already, uh, we started these, um, DG network, for example, we empower the people to try something out in their area of responsibility. We started our, our mindset, uh, workshops where people can self nominate and be part of, of these training sessions, find their own challenges where they have the need to change something. And then if they find the right solutions, we make it transparent, um, to have the chance to scale it up. And, and these are all things on this bottom up philosophy to enable the people across the organization. So I think one, one key element at the moment, uh, not at the moment, what we see constantly is enable people on this bottom up approach. Don't wait for the top down approach. It will take too long. It will be not adequate for the business and probably it's not efficient. Thanks. May, may I add one, then, one thing, Thomas, because I think the word, word self nomination that Klaus was using is, is a very important one because it plays into many different areas and just giving an example. You can at Siemens, you can self nominate yourself for a top, top edge leadership courses, like, like the SLE courses. That does not mean that you are taken, but, but at least you can raise your hand and just say, guys, independent of anyone else, I believe I should do this. I want to raise my hand. And that's our, that are the elements uh, that, that really quality that we need going forward more and more. And, 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 and maybe also. I have having these 30 seconds in mind, but what, what Robert said, uh, do you remember Thomas, when we had our self nomination process for our global trainee program, yes. we started two years ago and, and I can remember somebody said, are you really sure that you allow all these people to do the self nomination? Wouldn't it be better that we do this top down? Yeah. And after two rounds, I can see there are really great people who did this self nomination process. And I think it's so relevant because people are motivated like hell. People are want to make the change and have this willingness. And I think that is a key element. Yes. I want to also to, to mention this uh, example, but you have another example. We don't talk so publicly. We in SCM started also two years ago, the self nomination of BU CPOs, potential ones. I think that's really massive. You talk about one to 2 billion euro PVO purchasing volume responsibility. Next question from Danashri. Uh, I will answer it because the second question, it's an easy question. New leadership skills has been spoken about everywhere, but skills needed by non leaders is not discussed so widely. Uh, we have a digital mind workshop session going on since summer with more than 500 participants within STM. Our biggest problem is we don't have enough qualified trainers. 
So Klaus is supporting this, um, my team is supporting this, uh, and also other people are joining and helping. We are doing a lot within Siemens uh, for, say, non-leaders. Then, um, from Ed Robert, Kessia or Kesha. Robert, culture takes time to be established. However, business strategies are fluid and more immediate. How can we ensure balance so culture does not eat strategy? <laughs> Good question. Um, I, I, I hope I understood it, understood it correctly. Um, the question is, uh, culture change takes a long of, lot of time. How, how can we make sure that we still drive this culture change so there are in between always kind of disruptions? Is that the question? If, if so, the answer would be, uh, indeed, culture takes long time. We're talking timescale seven, 10 years. So you need to think about what are the fundamentals that are changing on this timescales and they are independent of, of short-term disturbances. And I mentioned this before, the biggest trend that, that is relevant for culture, completely independent of the business of the strategy of something is it's getting less predictable. So whatever you do, whatever you do to make your people feel more comfortable with less predictable environments, giving them tools to deal with less predictable environments, educate our, your leaders to be co comfortable and capable in less, less predictable environment. That's our no regret moves. And they are absolutely independent of every short-term strategy or quarterly review or something. It's a no regret move to invest in those things, but it takes time and probably time like, as we know from lean or HL transformations, six years, seven years, till it becomes really part of, of, of the DNA of a, of a unit uh, and not just something that people try to follow. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely now true. Come, comes a, uh, I will skip to the end. The next question for, for uh, Klaus, uh, because the guy named also his locations. Um, now we have a question from Pia, I think uh, a little it's challenging and I would address it to Robert. Uh, <laughs> enough Thanks. with our new normal. How will that work with our contracts? I hope it will come, but at the moment I, I know that at our location it makes a lot of trouble because of uh, occupational safety. So um, short, yeah, short, normal answer, is short answer is yes, there needs to be quite a few things to change. Second answer is this is extremely regional specific uh, because every country tries to cope with this with different legislations at the very moment. And we, we will see over the next two to three years, completely new ways of, uh, of contracts evolving and legal requirements evolving also in the individual countries. But, uh, but this is something where you just have to be very, very close to how the situation evolves regionally because it's no one fits all answer to this. Difficult, but yes. thanks. Um, I jump yeah. now because Tim said he's from Taiwan. That's addressed now to, to what's, uh, to, to what's Klaus. I'm Tim from Taiwan. How does SCM battle the current situation as the commodity markets are reaching the sky? Taiwan, A6, <laughs> chips. So yeah. how does SCM the current situation? Um, it's, it's the same. It's the same activities, the same exercise as uh, we did years before and all the other crises. So um, the first duty is always get the transparency, get immediately the transparency where you have the lag of material, which kind of supplier is affected and so on and so forth. And I, I have to tell you a couple of years ago, we had by far more stress and, um, and, yeah. and time, um, time activities to find it out where we really have the necessity and the need now with the existing, um, digitized platforms, we know exactly where we have our challenges and we put our resources together, uh, go straight to the supplier and, and ask for support and help. 
and, and also we offer them support and help. How can we manage the crisis? So in other words, you have to get in touch with your suppliers immediately on a very fact based, um, uh, framework. And then you have to manage this on a day to day on a daily business. Okay. Thanks. As we have only five minutes left, I, as we don't have a question after the session, so we skip it. That's a little bit HR. So what we're not getting done, we don't do it anymore. This time, uh, I will jump a little bit around to the questions and the simple to, uh, question to Robert, um, how can the growth mindset concept be implemented in the corporate culture to reach every employee? Um, good question. For, first of all, it's uh, hard to implement a culture, by the way, <laughs> um, which might, might already give a hint, uh, how it's not going to work. You can't implement it top down. What you can do is trying to talk about it, explain why it's so important, help people to find their own understanding of what this means in their environment. And that's basically what, what we try to do. So you won't see kind of an initi initiative say, this is gross mindset. Here's the definition. You learn it by heart now and we'll check it <laughs> like you did in former <laughs> school times. How stupid is that? It's about this discussions like we have today. We are not talking about the definition of gross mindset. We are talking about what is the fundamental challenge and what are individual parts that contribute to this. And then you can add in a couple of things like from, from behavioral science, if we talk about where can people learn and experiment, you know, they need psychological safety. So we can throw this in, but this is completely different than how do you now implement this gross mindset idea and definition into this company that is fixed mindset per per perfection. Yeah. If you would do this, got the point. I personally got it. I hope also the requesting person, um, I, I have a second question from Jeanette. Um, second question I have to skip. Sorry. I have a question from some, some mana, some manat Patil, uh, for Klaus, um, difficult question to answer in 30 seconds, but I'm, I count on you <laughs> as you have facilitated <laughs> platforms in SCM, what is your future plan or idea in SCM looking at the current digital work? Um, if you're talking about the digital world within supply chain. I think there are three major elements. Uh, first of all, it, it is this, we call it the digital mindset that, that goes together with the growth mindset. Yeah, we got to have this ability to try something out. And, and then this is accompanied with the digital leadership. So we got to have leaders who give people the freedom to act. And then comes the heart of digitalization. We need smart data lakes and we also need these methods, the analytics um, to manage these digitized smart data and, and that hope and, and should that must go together because um, if you just have smart data without and and smart analytics, it's just data. And on the other way around, if you have great analytics without the appropriate data lakes, it's an expertise without a value. So these things have to come together. And, and this is something we have to manage with different platforms, um, with digitalization on the source of contract, um, process and, and many other processes. But finally, it's a question of the motivation and willingness of the people to see digitalization as an opportunity and not as a threat. I think. The person didn't expect this kind of answer because, but it's emphasizing what you walk the talk. It's not about technology. It's about the people and the people have to get used and to be supported. I have, uh, one last question to, to Robert, and I will answer another short question because I oversaw it's from Mathieu Samide from Gabriel aluminium. What is European opinion experience on remote? auditing, for example, supply qualification, 
Siemens is doing this. Uh, we are sometimes taking a camera of the supplier and walk have a walk through the factory. Depending on the security levels, we're doing also external, external sustainability audits. We are going more and more online because it's, for example, difficult to travel to India. So it's working. Now I have a, a nice question from Brene to Robert. How do you find a leader in context of Siemens? What are the most important qualities also with a few to the future in 30 seconds? That's a nice ending. First, first answer is Siemens is not looking for a specific leadership type. We, we try to have as different leaders as possible because this is what you re require in complex environments. So this is probably the most important thing. We don't go for the perfect leader. We go for very different leadership styles. And, and this is a change to, to how many companies do it still, still today. The second thing is um, because we know we need to be very adaptable. We always look, look people who bring in the, the willingness to learn new things, to adapt, to grow and to empower other people. That is something that, that is important, independent of your specific leadership style, that you bring this attitude with you. And beyond that, as said, we are open and, and, and try to be as diverse in thinking as possible, because this is, this is what, what we need going forward. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to, to Robert and uh, to, to Klaus, who were brave to, to answer questions you never thought about because you don't know anybody who is asking the question and uh, there are some several very interesting questions one i can answer there will be uh, i talked with klaus before we will do another one or two external digi sofas uh, and if the feedback is okay we will continue and if the feedback is other way around then we skip it. I think that's a part of our learning culture that's established. So we experiment, we try, and this Digi Sofa is an example how we can do this. Um, to give you a, a heads up, what we are thinking about yesterday, we had our discussion about ecosystems in the Digi network. I was told yesterday by a, a Belgian professor from the WHO in, in um, Koblenz, and uh, it seems the Digi network is a kind of ecosystem already so could be interesting topic we have a request about artificial intelligence we have a sustainable blockchain that goes live they have a presentation at the world economic forum in may these are possible things we are thinking about but the most important topic is that we want to continue working on our digital mind journey our experience and i here i would like to to quote with klaus or maybe you quote yourself with this journey topic when we started digitalization, because I think that's one of the best phrases I've ever heard. And I think this phrase is everlasting. So Klaus, this all inclusive versus this thing. I, I, I cannot remember. Could you repeat it? <laughs> when, we, when, when we started the journey with the digital network, and it was all about digitalization and technology and so on. And, uh, Klaus said in the management team, we had every two months a management meeting, uh, we have to start a journey. And for some of you, it will be a surprise because this digital experience journey, it's not an all inclusive package. It yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's, I, I know it's, it's not a, it's not a standard trip. It's an adventure trip and, and probably it's an expedition. Yeah. And, and therefore we, yeah. we count on everybody and that goes together with what Robert said. Um, if you want to do a very successful expedition, you need a, a diverse team. Otherwise, you will not succeed. <laughs> so, absolutely. okay. I will also work on the diversity on the digital sofa. Next time I try to get also different colors, genders within our sofa. We have more than different people, a uh, hundred within our supply chain community. Uh, but I think regarding the first uh, so far externally um i have to thank you both and i have also to thank uh, daniel you, you cannot see him he is our team the digital so far has one person this webcast is one person one show and it's daniel 
or if Daniel is sick, we take a working student, or if the working student is on leave, then we take Rocco. So we are used to work slim, agile, and fast. And if there was some issue with the tech uh, technology, we are uh, used to it because nothing is perfect. But I think you have been a perfect um, audience because you overwhelmed us with questions and we will continue with this. Uh, thanks a lot to Klaus and Robert, but maybe we do in some time uh, a setup in one year to reflect what happened with this DigiSofa on the external world. And I hope you have a great Wednesday, a great week. And uh, thanks that you supported us and discussed with us. Have a good time. At that time, uh, I have to end now. And because the people who know me, I'm always killing the agenda. So <laughs> goodbye. Thanks for your support. It was fun. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. There was. Thank you.